All right, guys, in this video, we want to compute uh, an integral by making a change of coordinates. We're not given the change of coordinates, but we are given the domain. So the domain's a triangle with these vertices. So I think the first step should be, the domain's called D in this uh, example, even though it's, we've been calling it R in the other videos. But the first thing we should definitely do is sketch this domain, D, and then we can think about um, how we're going to define our transformation. So let's first start by just plotting these vertices. So the first one is 0, 0. You don't really need to do much for that. The other two are 3, 1, and 1, 3. So I'm just going to put some tick marks here. 3, 1 is going to be right here. So this is 3, 1 in the xy plane. And 1, 3 is up here. 1, 3. And so if we connect these together, then this triangle right here, this is our domain D in the xy plane. Now notice that this domain is neither type 1 nor type 2 by itself. Um, it can easily be done by, say, making it type 1 by dividing this into two triangles right here, into, say, a left side and then a right side. Um, you'd have to do two integrals. It's not a big deal. But the point of this one is to practice doing a transformation of the coordinate system. And so to do that, we need to find or choose a transformation, and it's got to come from another domain. So we'll call this coordinate domain the UV domain. And we, we need to make a decision right now. The first decision we need to make is what kind of shape do we want to have in our UV domain? And there is not a wrong choice here. Well, there might be a wrong choice, but basically since the domain D is a triangle in the XY plane, we want to find a triangle in the UV plane to transform this to, but we want to do it in such a way that it's going to be easier to integrate. And so it, since it's already a triangle, the only thing that's going to make it easier is to make it either type 1 or type 2. And probably we should try to make it into a right triangle, and that'll really make our life as easy as possible. So um, I'm just going to make some choices here, but you can experiment with this on your own and make sure that you get the same answer. But I'm going to say let's make the origin map to the origin, so I'm going to color code these points. So the origin will, will go to the origin. And then I'm going to pick, say, the point over here. Let's make this the point 1, 0. This point I'm going to have mapped to the point 3, 1. Okay? And then the next point I'm going to pick is going to be the point, so this is the point 1, 0. The next point I'm going to pick is going to be the point 1, 1. So I'm picking a really nice geometry here in the, in the space that we're going to actually compute the integral in. Okay? And when you fill this in, this is now a right triangle, and it's given by, obviously it goes from 0 to 1, so the u goes from 0 to 1 uh, this way, and v going this way is bounded between v equals 0, uh, oops, v equals 0 um, and as a lower bound. And the upper bound is this line right here, and this line is just u equals v, because I chose this point to be 1, 1. Okay, so this goes from v to u. I'm sorry, from 0 up to u. Okay, in the v direction. So this is going to be our domain S, and this is great, but now the problem is we need to find the transformation that does this for us. And the easiest thing for us to do is going to be to actually find the transformation that goes this way because, well, it doesn't really, we can find either one, actually. But, yeah, we're going to need this one. And since we chose our domain, let, let's find this one. Okay, so on the next page, let's, we'll write out everything we have here. So, um, let me go to the next page. So, again, we want to find our t of u and v, that the expressions are going to be, since this is taking uh, straight line edges, if we go back to our picture, the idea here, again, is that it's going to take straight edges to straight edges, right? Um, and so, if we can figure out how these edges get mapped, then we'll have everything. Um, so this edge corresponds to this one. And so we really just need to figure out how the two, how the two, the green and the yellow in the picture that I've drawn here, how those two map, and then the third one will take care of itself. And since these are straight lines mapping to straight lines, this is gonna be called a linear transformation. Lines go to lines. And the equation over here is then just going to be uh, x equals a times u plus b times v, and y is equal to c times u 
plus d times v. And our job is going to be to solve for this a, b, c, and d. These are going to be constants. Okay? Now, to do this, we have some points that we know exactly where they go. So we know that t of 0, 0 is equal to 0, 0. That one's not going to tell us too much. Um, because if u and v are 0, then the way we've defined this function, of course, it's going to be 0, 0. The more interesting ones are going to be these ones. t of 1, 0 maps to, in the xy plane, it maps to uh, the point 3, comma 1, we decided. Right? And so this is actually going to give us two equations now, because it's going to say that x is equal to 3 when uh, u is equal to 1 and b is equal to 0. Sorry, v is equal to 0. So this tells us that the a has to be 3 in our equation. And then the next one says that um, y is equal to 1 uh, in the same scenario, right? So when c times 1 plus uh, b times 0. And so this tells us that c is equal to 1. So there we've got two of our coefficients right off the bat. The next point that we know is that t of 1, 1, when u and v are 1, 1, this is supposed to map to the point 1, 3. And so I'm not looking at this, but I'm just remembering. So this is the point 1, 1 right here, and it maps to the point 1, 3. So this is where I'm getting this, this information from. Okay, and again, we get two equations now. So when u and v are both 1, this says that x should be 1. So 1 is equal to a times 1 plus b times 1. But we already know that a is 3, right? So this says that 1 equals 3 plus b. And then, of course, b has to be negative 2 for that to work. Okay? And then the next equation is the same way. When u and v are both 1, y is supposed to be 3. So this equation says that 3 is c times 1 plus d times 1. But again, we know that c is 1, so this says that 3 equals 1 plus d, and now d is equal to positive 2. All right, so taking all this information that we just got, solving for these coefficients, we can now write down our transformation. Our transformation t of uv is equal to, our two equations are x equals 3u, minus 2v, and y is equal to u uh, plus 2v. And this is our transformation. Okay? Now, this is all we really need to do the integral, but in the uh, instructions up here, I wrote that we should find the inverse transformation. Um, sometimes uh, this is necessary, but in this case, we don't actually have to do this. But what you would do if you did want to find this would be to try to solve these equations for u and v, because the inverse transformation is the one that takes the x and y to the uv plane. Okay, And one way to, to do that is to just add these equations together, and what you'll end up with is just, it's like elimination, right? So x plus y is equal to 4u, and so this says that u has to equal 1 fourth x plus 1 fourth y. All right? And that's by adding the two together. Um, once you know what u is, you can plug into either one of them to find v. And so you can use the second one. But y is then equal to 1 fourth x plus 1 fourth y plus 2v. Just do a little rearranging. You get that 2v is equal to oh, negative 1 fourth x um, plus... 3 fourths y, and then divide by 2, so v is equal to negative 1 eighth x plus 3 eighths y. Okay, and so these two functions, the u and the v, they make up the inverse transformation. Again, we don't need it for this problem, but if you do need to do this on a homework problem or on a problem in the future, that's, that's how you would solve for the inverse transformation. But for us, we only care, we care about this transformation, the straightforward um, transformation that takes the uv points to the xy plane. All right, so now we need to use this to try to compute the integral. Um, we'll compute the Jacobian first and write out the integral. So remember, our transformation, t of uv, was equal to, let's just go back and remember it, it's x is 3u minus 2v. 
and y, the equation was, is equal to u plus 2v. All right, and we need to compute the Jacobian of this so that we know how this affects the area of our, of our shape. And so remember the Jacobian as a, as a matrix, j hat of uv, this is just the matrix of partial derivatives. dx du, dy du, dx dv, and dy dv. All right, and so these derivatives, because these equations are linear, are just going to be numbers. dx du is just the derivative of x with respect to u, that's just 3. Uh, dy du is just 1. dx dv is negative 2, and dy dv is positive 2. And so the Jacobian matrix for this transformation is just a constant matrix. Um, it doesn't change from point to point. It's the same at every point. And this is uh, one of the definitions you could use to define a linear transformation, actually that the transformation equals its Jacobian at every point. All right, so now what we need to do is take the Jacobian determinant, or what we just call the Jacobian in this class, and remember that is just our crisscross difference of the two diagonal elements. So that's our J of UV, and this is obviously just going to be 6 minus, this product is a negative 2, and so the Jacobian is 8. So this transformation stretches the space by a factor of 8 as far as area goes. And if we go back to our picture, I drew these things so they look about the same size, but the scale is way off because um, in this shape, the scale is just one. This is a one by one triangle. Um, and this one, these, these sides are um, much longer. So this goes out to three, right? So it stretches by a factor of eight. All right, now we want to write down our integral. So uh, we have to go back and remember what our integral was, but it was the integral over d, this region d, of 3x plus y squared dA, so that's in the xy plane. 3x plus y squared dA. Okay, and now we need to change um, everything. So this is the integral over, we'll call it s, we'll have to write this out in a second. But of, we have to plug in these formulas for x and, and for y and get this integral in terms of u and v. Okay, so this is going to be now 3 times the formula for x, so 3 times 3u minus 2v, plus u plus 2v quantity squared. And then this whole thing has to get multiplied by our Jacobian, don't forget the Jacobian, 8, and then du dv. Okay, and we know that the boundaries of our integral, we wrote this down before, or that um, this is kind of backwards. We're going to have to switch the order of these two. Okay, but this is uh, in the u direction it goes from 0 to 1. In the v direction it goes from 0 up to u. Okay, and then we can kind of factor out the 8. It can just hang out. And we should multiply through everything else so that we can easily integrate this thing with respect to u and v. And so this one's going to be uh, 9u minus 6v for the first portion. Plus, then when we multiply this out, this is going to be plus u squared plus 4uv plus 4v squared. And now it's dv du. Okay? So this is the integral we have to compute. We obviously need some more room to do this. So I'll copy this and take it to the next page. And let's compute this integral. Remember, this is an inter iterated integral. There's no Fubini theorem here because the boundary on this inner integral is a function, right? So we have to integrate with respect to v first. Again, the 8 can hang out from 0 to 1. Um, and we just do this term by term integrating with respect to v. So all the u's are just constants here. So this one's going to be um, 9uv minus, this is 3v squared plus u squared v, plus this one becomes 2 uv squared, and then plus 4 thirds v cubed. And now we plug in our boundaries of v equals 0 and u before we do the next integral. So when all the v's become 0, it zeroes out all those terms. When the v's become u's, they become u's. So this is now 9 u squared minus 3u squared plus u cubed plus 2u cubed plus 4 thirds 
u cubed du. And of course it makes sense now to combine all the different powers. So total here we have 6u squared plus we're going to have, what is this, um, 3, 9, 13 thirds. Uh, please fix this if I'm wrong. 13 thirds u cubed du. And from here we just finish off the integral. So antiderivative 6u squared is going to be 2u cubed plus antiderivative of this is 13 twelfths u to the fourth. And we plug in our boundaries of 0 and 1 again. This time it's a 1 though, so this leaves us with 8 times 2 plus 13 twelfths. And if we add this up, this is going to be 8 times 24 plus 13 is 37 over 12. And so 8 times 37 is 240 plus 56, so 296 over 12, which of course reduces. I should have reduced it back there, but I'm going to leave it like this. Okay? You can reduce it. Reduce this fraction.